Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to present our work on Private Drop, a practical privacy preserving authentication protocol for Apple AirDrop. We are a team from the Cryptography and Privacy Engineering Group and the Secure Mobile Networking Lab at Technical University of Darmstadt. This work was a very fruitful collaboration with my colleagues Alex, Matthias, Thomas and Christian, who is also giving this talk together with me. So what are we going to cover in this talk? We will start with a brief introduction into the Apple AirDrop file sharing service and discuss a design issue in the authentication handshake that compromises its user's privacy. Second, we will present a privacy preserving drop-in replacement for the AirDrop protocol that we call private drop and which is based on private set intersection. Finally, we will show results from our performance evaluation, which demonstrates that our native prototype implementation for the macOS and iOS operating systems maintains an excellent user experience with an online authentication delay of less than one second. AirDrop is Apple's file sharing service that is integrated into their major product lines, including iPhones and Mac computers, and it has been around for about seven years. AirDrop runs over Wi-Fi, or more specifically, a proprietary Wi-Fi-based link layer protocol called Apple Wireless Direct Link. When discovering nearby devices that it can show to the user, AirDrop conducts an authentication handshake during which the two parties, a sender and a receiver device, would like to find out whether or not they are mutual contacts. Because, well, you typically want to send your personal pictures or other sensitive files only to people you already know. And here's how it works. The two devices will set up a TLS connection using client and server certificates. Via this connection, the sender sends an HTTP discover message that includes a validation record. The validation record is essentially an Apple signed certificate that contains hashes of the user's contact identifiers. These are phone numbers and email addresses that the user has registered with Apple during the account setup and that have gone through an ownership verification process. So something like receiving an authentication code via SMS. This first step of the protocol semantically translates to, I want to send something to a nearby device, so I first tell everyone who I am. Then when receiving the validation record, the receiver will first check that both the TLS certificate and the validation record are cryptographically valid and belong together. Then the receiver checks whether any of the hash contact identifiers from the validation record are in its own local address book. If that's the case, that means that the receiver knows the sender and the receiver will send its own validation record back to the sender. The sender in turn will validate the certificates in the same way and decide whether or not it knows the receiver. If yes, the device will show a user icon in the sharing menu using information from its local address book. Finally, the user can decide who they want to send the file to. So what can go wrong with such a rather simple authentication protocol? First of all, we realized that AirDrop uses hashing as a means for obfuscating the clear text of phone numbers and email addresses. Since the input space is small and predictable, it is rather trivial to recover the pre-images via brute force or dictionary attacks. The second issue is a bit more subtle and lies in the semantics of the protocol. Currently, the receiver will share its contact identifiers if it determines that it knows the sender. A well-known person, such as the boss of a company, could exploit this to extract personal contact details from the employees. We've also shown that both vulnerabilities are easily exploitable in practice. We implemented a proof of concept that makes use of an optimized rainbow table construction that is able to recover hashed phone numbers in a matter of milliseconds. Hardware-wise, a Wi-Fi capable device is sufficient and the attacker only has to wait until a nearby target opens the sharing menu on their iPhone to immediately get hold of their phone number. Now I want to hand over to Christian who is going to present our solution to the problem. Thanks Milan. Now let's take a look at our design to provide privacy preserving mutual authentication for Apple AirDrop. For our solution private drop, we have two main privacy requirements. First, we want to disclose contact identifiers only if both parties are mutual contacts. And second, we want to disclose only those contact identifiers that the other party already knows to prevent receiver leakage. Additionally, we have to keep the overhead low since we operate on mobile devices. The authentication must work in offline scenarios. And of course, we have to consider that users might act maliciously. In the following, I will explain how we fulfill all these requirements with a technique called private set intersection. 
Private set intersection protocols, PSI in short, are cryptographic protocols that allow two parties to compute the intersection of their input sets without disclosing any data outside of the intersection. For example, the airdrop sender can input their contact identifiers and the airdrop receiver can input their address book to determine whether the receiver knows the sender, which is the case for non-empty intersection. A straightforward application of PSI for airdrop could therefore work as follows. In the first step, we would have the sender input their IDs and the receiver their address book such that the receiver can say, I know the sender or a board. Then we would run PSI with the roles reversed such that the sender can say, I know the receiver or a board. However, there are two issues. The first is that a malicious receiver not necessarily aborts if the intersection in the first step was empty and can try to fool the sender by using widely popular phone numbers instead of the own ones, for example, an emergency number that the sender has stored with high probability. The second problem is that the computation complexity of the online phase of the PSI protocol here mainly depends on the size of the address book, which is usually much larger than the set of own contact identifiers. We therefore propose to slightly change the semantics. For this, we exactly swap the inputs provided by each of the parties. This way, in the first execution, receivers only learn whether they are known by the sender and then have to prove that they know the sender. This change also has the nice benefit that the online computation complexity of PSI now mainly depends on the smaller input set, which we assume to be at most of size 10. Once both protocol executions are done, the two parties can safely disclose their identifiers in later steps of the airdrop protocol as they are known by the respective other party anyway. When designing and implementing the details of private drop, we had to overcome a number of challenges. First, we had to choose a PSI protocol that is efficient and secure against malicious users who try to actively cheat in the protocol. Then, we had to consider the case that parties lie about their actual inputs, which cannot be prevented even by a maliciously secure PSI. Once these challenges were solved, we also had to tightly integrate PSI into the airdrop protocol flow while maintaining backwards compatibility with the original airdrop to increase chances of adoption by Apple. Also, for our prototype implementations on real iOS and macOS devices, we first had to come up with a native open source implementation of the original AirDrop protocol, as well as our secure private drop alternative. I will now detail the protocol selection process and give a an high level overview over the individual steps and some of our optimizations. When looking at the PSI liter literature, there are very efficient protocols based on oblivious transfer, specialized protocols for exactly the use case of unbalanced input set sizes, and simple public key crypto-based protocols that have been proposed, proposed since the 1980s. However, protocols from the first two categories gain their performance mainly from shifting communication overhead to an input independent setup phase which is not suitable for our use case where devices meet ad hoc. Also, some of them rely on advanced cryptographic primitives for which no industry-grade implementations exist or have assumptions about non-colluding servers. Therefore, we choose to go with a simple, maliciously secure public key-based protocol that for comparatively small input set sizes can be efficiently implemented using standard elliptic curve libraries. For the first PSI execution in private drop, this protocol informally works as follows. We introduce a pre-computation phase where the sender first prepares reusable encryptions of all address book entries CJ under a secret key K. On the other side, the receiver likewise prepares encryptions of their IDs under secret keys alpha I. Then, in the online phase, the receiver transfers the encrypted IDs Y to the sender, who additionally encrypts these under the key K. The sender then returns the double encrypted value set together with the own encrypted address book entries U in random order. The receiver can then remove the own alpha keys from set to determine the intersection by comparing address book entries with contact identifiers 
under the key K. In order to prevent users um, from lying about their contact identifiers to cause fake matches, we additionally propose to use signed inputs in the protocol. For this, we suggest to leverage Apple's existing CA infrastructure to certify the authenticity of the encrypted contact identifiers Y. These signatures can then be transferred as part of the PSI protocol and be verified by the sender before proceeding any further. With this quick overview, back to Milan. Thanks, Christian. Now it's time to show how well our new protocol performs in practice. For this, we implemented a native prototype of private drop for macOS and iOS written in Swift. You can see here the authentication delay of private drop depending on the size of the address book and the number of own contact identifiers. In green, we show the address baseline delay, which is basically independent of these set sizes. We can note an expected overhead for private drop compared to, you, to the original protocol, but still we managed to achieve an authentication delay well below one second, which is considered an immediate response in human perception. This shows that private drop is ready for practical deployment. This was private drop, a practical privacy preserving authentication protocol for airdrop. We published our prototype implementation and evaluation data on GitHub. Our work has received quite a bit of national as well as international media and press coverage. And finally, we informed Apple about this issue about two years ago, but so far they have not indicated that they're working on a solution. This means that as of today, Apple users remain vulnerable. So we hope that our solution will find its way into the Apple ecosystem soon. Thank you for your attention.